Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. I welcome you all at the TICE Webinar League 2021, which has been introduced to have a platform where we all can virtually meet, have chit chat and discuss about latest trends and opportunities in industry with top industry experts. As you all may already know, this league consists of seven different rounds led by the field experts of different branches of data analytics domain. Let's take our first step by discussing the role of Microsoft data analytics products. It's a common misperception that Microsoft Excel is easy and since we start using it from our school days, we rate ourselves eight or seven upon asking about our expert level in using the tool. But I hate to break it to you that it's not true. MS Excel is a highly technical and useful tool for solving complex problems and assists business analysts in organizations to make data driven decisions. Not only that, Microsoft Power BI serves the same purpose, but with different functionalities. Mr. Mohsen, Senior Manager Strategy and Analytics is here to let us know further about these tools and will guide us to a pathway to become expert in these. Over to you, Mohsen, thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, I hope that you can see me. Uh, uh, if not, um, I mean, can you just actually transfer the rights to me so I can actually turn on my video? Mohsen, um, we cannot see your screen. Uh, just a second. Can you see it now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so, is my am I audible? Uh, am I audible to you, honey? Yes, you are audible. Um, Omar Anjum has something to say. Uh, Omar, I have allowed you uh, to talk. You can talk now. There seems to be some sort of a problem. Um, yeah. Well, let's start. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just start. Uh, I mean, let's just give. Uh, let's just like give them five more minutes. I think like we have like eighty-three participants as of right now. Let's just wait for uh, five more minutes and see if other people can join in, uh, and then we can start. Um, um, would anyone take the lead and uh, introduce themselves over here? Um, before I start picking names and actually start asking people by their name, um, anyone who can actually take the lead and just you know introduce themselves. The four participants raise their hands. Guys, uh, any one of you can actually uh, go ahead and introduce themselves. That would be really great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Amina, uh, are these people allowed to talk? Uh, yes, you can allow them um, okay. by going through the. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm actually. Uh, I, I just uh, allowed uh, Mr. Uh, Umar Anjum to talk. Umar, why don't you just go ahead? Uh, you just raise your hand. I am I am working at the Bazaar Center. I am a league graduate in computer science from NFCIT Multan. Uh, okay, oh, what can you speak up a little bit? Uh, yeah. Uh, you said you just recently graduated, right? Yes. Okay, and where did you graduate from? From NFCIT Multan. NFCIT that's really nice and uh have you started working somewhere or are you still yes, actually searching i'm working with the aisha zaman ahmad i think you know uh, her she is uh, in lahore and i'm still doing job in badar center in lahore okay all right that's really nice uh, congratulations on the first job Okay, uh, thank you for this introduction. Uh, I'm just going to put you on mute uh, real quickly and I'm going to move on to Faustino. 
uh, if I have actually pronounced your name, uh, you know, correctly. Uh, I just, I, I've just unmuted you, Faustino. Why don't you just go ahead and introduce, introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, um, I uh, no, uh, I'm actually asking Faustino. He actually raised his hand. I think we have actually, I think we lost him. Uh, how about uh, Muhammad Talha? Um, Talha, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, can you hear me? Absolutely. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Muhammad Talha and uh, I'm from, uh, I'm uh, finally a uh, student uh, doing bachelor's uh, in computer science from UET. And uh, currently I'm working on computer vision. So uh, this is my short introduction. Okay, and what brings you to this uh, webinar? Uh, are you like interested in data sciences or, you know, basic analytics uh, to actually, you know, start off with because we are actually uh, talking about Excel uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's role in business analytics. So are you interested in that? Actually, I am very curious about uh, you know data science. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm I have been working on machine learning and computer vision for one day uh, for one year. Okay. So so that's why I will try. Uh, I'm trying to understand the basic uh, you know uh, the basis of uh, data science. Mm -hmm. uh, I have also uh, you know uh, visit uh, the dice analytics. Uh, okay. Different uh, seminars before it. Okay. So, all right. That, that, that's, uh, that's, that's really nice. Uh, best of luck with your career uh, and uh, whatever you want to do with it. Okay. Uh, how about Wajahat? Uh, would you like to actually introduce yourself so, since you were one of the people who raised their hands? Assalamu sir. How are you? Walaikum well, Assalam. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Sir, uh, my name is Vijayat Ashur. Uh, basically, I'm from Bahawalpur. Mm -hmm. I was uh, graduated back in 2017. Uh, I did BS Aviation Management from a Superior University. Okay. So now, from uh, uh, last one and a half year, I am into Amazon business, and okay. we are providing we are a service providing agency, uh, basically a freelancing micro agency. We are mm -hmm. providing. Amazon uh, related services to our uh, clients. Okay. So uh, I was just uh, scrolling Facebook today and I came to know about this. Uh, I don't know uh, what is the topic of this, um, but uh, basically what interest, uh, um, why uh, I am here, why I joined this is uh, just because of uh, Excel. And actually, mm -hmm. I was not uh, fond of Excel, uh, I never used it much in my, uh, uh, you know, uh, in my studies, uh, during my studies. So, uh, but when I started uh, providing services regarding Amazon, uh, I used to uh, play a lot with uh, brand analytics and analytical data. And I used to uh, perform, you know, a lot of tasks on uh, Excel. So I just wanted to explore more and uh, uh, I just want to know what kind of topics we are going to discuss in this seminar okay. or what is the scope of our uh, webinar today. Okay, uh, well, I, I, I will definitely, you know, clarify that for you. So this is uh, the place you should be if you actually want to learn about Excel and how it can actually pave uh, your way uh, for basic data analytics and business analytics. So this webinar is actually about uh, you know um, data analytics uh, and how Excel plays actually an important role and is actually uh, the stepping stone for actually getting into data analytics, any sort of analytics and data analytics. So thank you, thank you for actually your um, your uh, you know I your basically part of that. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. 
Uh, and um, moving ahead, uh, let's, uh, Ashin, would you like to actually uh, introduce yourself uh, since you raised your hand? Assalamualaikum. Uh, this is Ahsan Ali from uh, Tabalti. Uh, I'm working with this organization uh, since uh, 2011. We deal with data, day-to-day -day, day -day activities and uh, face challenges in it. Uh, while we make it available for the visualization uh, in the dashboards, uh, etc. So the purpose to attend this webinar is uh, to learn about how to present the data professionally to make the decision making easy uh, in our life. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I, I have to sound like your you know, passion because I think you're on the road and you're in the seminar. So kudos to you. Um, I felt very nice of you. Uh, thank you so very much um, for your introduction. Sir, last week, what you so uh, we are actually just going to go ahead and uh, kick off our, uh, you know, uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, can everybody see my screen and the slides? Uh, Hadi, can you actually uh, see my screen? So, I mean... Yes, the screen is visible. Awesome. Slides are visible. Okay, cool. Uh, so, um, Welcome to this webinar by Dyson Analytics. Uh, Dyson Analytics is actually an organization that is striving inside Pakistan to empower uh, the data analytics ecosystem. Uh, we've been around for like five to seven years, if I'm not wrong, five years to seven years, in fact. And uh, I have been associated with Dyson Analytics for like one, one and a half years. Um, uh, DICE uh, really wants to kickstart the data analytics ecosystem in Pakistan because nowadays data is the new oil, as you guys have heard, and it is the key uh, to like everything, uh, good decision making, good financial decision making, good, uh, you know, uh, good health decisions. Uh, I mean, any, any aspect of life that you look at, uh, you would actually uh, see that data is driving uh, a lot of decision making. and. Uh, this uh, so this webinar is actually the first of the seven free webinar rounds that we at uh, Dice have actually decided decided to hold in order to uh, you know make the general public aware uh, uh, to make the general public aware. Okay, just a quick uh, you know uh, info for from from uh, Ariel that. Uh, I need to announce that if uh, somebody is having issues, audio issues, uh, you know, you, they can actually join us uh, on Facebook. So if they're actually having issues on uh, or audio issues on Zoom, they can actually join us uh, on a session that's actually been live telecasted on Facebook. So um, getting back to my you know, presentation, so this is one of the first uh, uh, seven, one, of, uh, one of the seven free webinar rounds that DICE has actually decided to, uh, you know, conduct uh, starting today. And the objective of this uh, whole series of webinars is actually to entice people, young people, working professionals to embrace what I call is the way of the data. Uh, because as I said, the data is sort of running everything nowadays and it is essential for us to embrace this methodology of actually making calculated data-driven decisions uh, because we can actually see the difference uh, when we see uh, nations who actually drive their decision-making using data versus uh, you know, nations which actually drive their decisions by just ad hoc decision-making. And the difference is very clear. So data does have a lot of value it actually adds a lot of value, and that's why it's necessary that uh, you know uh, we actually embrace this uh, you know new uh, changing uh, you know uh, uh, a new changing uh, you know data driven decision making methodology. Uh, so uh, this is the first of the seven uh, webinars that we are actually going to conduct. So I'll just introduce you to the, to the rest of the five. Uh, one of them is still to be decided. 
Uh, so this is uh, my webinar that you can see on the screen, which is on the Microsoft Excel gateway to analytics. Um, the next webinar is by Rosario Silipio, Silipo, sorry. Uh, I hope that I pronounced that correctly. Uh, and that is on text mining uh, use cases uh, using MIME. Uh, that is on the 13th of January. Uh, then uh, on the 14th uh, of uh, uh, January, uh, we are actually going to have Vakas Arshad with us, who is going to talk about data warehouse and business intelligence. Uh, so anyone who's actually interested in uh, you know data warehousing and business intelligence as a profession in the business analytics domain, uh, they should definitely actually sign up for this webinar. Uh, then uh, we have a webinar by Sir Muhammad Jabad, uh, because he's also my teacher, uh, on the 20th of January, uh, which is on data sciences and machine learning. So Sir Jabad actually teaches data sciences and machine learning at Dyson Analytics, uh, and his webinar is on going to be on the 20th. So people who are interested in machine learning, data sciences, neural network, artificial intelligence, and want to drive their career in that direction in DICE uh, in, in, in data analytics should actually sign up for uh, this webinar. Uh, then on the 23rd of January, we have Moit Tarek, uh, who is actually going to be teaching us, or actually, in fact, is going to be giving us a glimpse into the world of big data. Uh, and uh, the last one on my list is uh, um, a webinar on the 29th of January by Ali Kahoot. Uh, which is going to be on DevOps. Um, so let's get kicking, let's get started. Uh, I am over here with the objective of actually, uh, my objective is to actually sort of convince you people uh, into understanding that Microsoft Excel is a definitive gateway for your career in analytics. We are going to talk about a lot of things in the seminar, but my primary focus is going to revolve around uh, why Microsoft Excel is a great place to start your career in data analytics. And I'm actually also going to look at the reasons that make Excel a great entry point for starting a career in Excel. Uh, along with, uh, we will also try to look at some of the reasons as to why Excel is actually so popular in the corporate world. A little bit about myself. Uh, uh, as you know, my name is Mohsen Mahmood. Uh, my experience spans over 12 years, out of which seven years of experience, uh, directly or indirectly, actually is uh, where I've actually tried to fiddle with numbers. I've actually tried to do business analytics, data analytics, uh, you know, uh, a bit of machine learning, uh, you know, a little bit of anomaly detection. Uh, and I have worked in multiple industries, including business process outsourcing, uh, white goods information communication technology and telecom. And now I am actually working for a small uh, startup, uh, which is working in the educational technology domain. Um, just bear with me for a second. I think somebody has a question. Uh, Saim Rashid, I would uh, really uh, recommend that if you're having some issues with the sound, you can always log off and join our the Facebook live stream that uh, we are actually, uh, we are actually broadcasting. Uh, all right, uh, moving forward. So uh, right now I'm actually working uh, with a small startup called Red Marker Systems, which is a small educational technology startup. And uh, I am working over there as a manager of strategy and analytics. And I have been associated with Dice Analytics for like close to one and a half year, as I actually said earlier. Uh, moving ahead. Um, so uh, just recapping the topics of discuss, not recapping, just actually telling you about the topics that we are actually going to discuss today. First of all, we are going to try and define what is analytics. So before we actually move on to actually being a good tool for analytics, I really want you guys to understand what is actually analytics, what defines analytics, and what is analytics and what is business analytics. Uh, then we are going to try and unearth the reason why analytics has become so important today. So we're going to talk about the importance of analytics today, as of today, as in like today's world. Uh, then we would, uh, sorry about that, then we are going to see the reasons why Excel and analytics actually go hand in hand. So this is where I will, would actually try to convince 
uh, you guys uh, to the to the utmost of my ability. Uh, that Excel is actually a great tool uh, if you are actually uh, you know uh, a beginner at Excel, uh, not even a beginner. If you want to actually learn a number crunching and you know basic analytic sense, Excel is a great tool to actually have in your arsenal. Uh, in the next section, uh, I will walk you through uh, some examples that I have compiled together on the use cases of Excel. These examples will give you a small glimpse on the different, uh, into the different uses of Excel and how Excel fits into our daily work lives, making them easier. So these examples have been compiled, uh, you know, uh, using, uh, I mean, my past experience, whatever I have actually worked on in the past. So these are like small, uh, you know, uh, peaks into what Excel can do. I'm not actually going to go into a lot of detail. I'm just actually going to briefly walk you through those examples so that you understand the capabilities of Excel. Um, yeah, I actually forgot to actually mention, uh, which I, I should have actually mentioned in the beginning. If you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, you know uh, write them down with yourself because we will have uh, a question and answer session at the end of uh, this uh, webinar. Okay. Um, so uh, in the end, uh, we are going to close this session by talking about the scope of Excel, where actually, believe it or not, I'm actually going to tell you about some of the limitations of Excel. Uh, so, I mean, like everything in this world, nothing is perfect. Uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, certain limitations of Excel, and I would definitely want you guys uh, to actually uh, know those limitations. And uh, in the end, we are actually going to have the question and answer sessions. Uh, all right, moving on to the next slide, where, uh, which is actually the first section that I just told you about. So what is analytics and business analytics? So let's just delve into what is analytics and what is business analytics. So analytics by definition is nothing more than information resulting from the systematic analysis of uh, data or statistics. Uh, of data or statistics. And uh, uh, what does that mean? I mean, so this this just means that it is the systematic uh, compilation and uh, systematic analysis of data or statistics. I mean, in order to actually explain analytics, I would just like to give you an example uh, of a product that I came across on YouTube. It's called Lumen. Uh, and let me actually show you a small, uh, it, it's an advertisement of Lumen. And I just want to show it to you. Excuse, uh, excuse me, can I have uh, you have a question, sir? Yes, can I ask something? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Can I get these uh, slides? Uh, absolutely. So I, I, I'll, I'll try to make sure that these slides get posted. How can we get? How we can get? Uh, we'll I'll, I'll make sure that they get posted, uh, you know, somewhere so you can download. Okay, thank you so much. Guys, if you have any questions, just hold them till the end of uh, this session, where we can actually, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll actually take all the questions uh, from you guys. I'm actually uh, working on making the video work. So just give me a second, please. Okay, I hope you can see the... the it only Nothing but plant-based. <laughs> Take a deep breath and hold it. Right now, you hold in your lung, secret to sustainable weight loss. You could read that now. This is Lumen, the first device for hacking your metabolism. With just one breath, Lumen tells you what you're currently burning for energy, carbs, or body fat. So you can see what's going on with your metabolism in real time 
and what to do about it. Breathe in the morning to get a personalized nutrition plan for the day. One that's based on your personal goals and adaptable to your eating habits. Breathe before a meal, see how the last one affected you, and get recommendations to keep your body on track. Breathe to see if you have enough energy for your workout or if you should fuel up. Lumen doesn't just tell you what to do. It gives you the whys behind it all. Why your weight might be fluctuating. Why you feel low on energy. Why your body is storing carbs. Because the truth is, you have a different metabolism than me, than him, than her. Which is why Lumen is more than a diet. It's nutrition designed for you. And all you have to do is breathe. Sound like magic? It's actually science. The concentration of the various gases in your breath tells us what your cells are burning for fuel. Like CO2, burning fuel from carbs releases more CO2 than burning body fat. Well, this science isn't new. It's been helping world-class athletes reach peak levels of fitness for years. What we think we're doing and what's actually happening in our bodies can be very different things. Lumen is like a tool for actually giving you that ability to understand and sense what's going on in your body. That's a super power. Anyway, Lumen measures your breath, does some math, and sends expert advice straight to your smartphone. Lumen is your lifestyle life coach, your metabolic meal planner, your nightstand nutritionist, your daily dietitian, your sleep scientist, your workout whisperer, your holistic health handheld, simply speaking, a sustainable solution to a healthier new you. We spent the last four years validating Lumen's technology in clinical trials, universities, and top hospitals around the world. And we've been helping hundreds of beta users make a sustainable change in their lives. I've been able to lose 15 pounds with Lumen, which is amazing. It's crazy. I use it like I use a scale these days. There's this awe aspect of it. How can this little thing, doesn't even weigh much, actually measure my metabolism just in my breath? Within a day, I'm going to see Lumen's direct impact based off of what I eat. Now we're in so I'm just going to stop the video over here uh, and get back to the presentation. So I just wanted to make a point uh, that, um, uh, you know, how, you know, Lumen as a company is actually using analytics uh, and it's actually selling you analytics. So, I mean, what is Lumen, the product that you saw in the advertisement, what is it actually in its essence? Yes, it is actually a piece of hardware that allows you to unlock, you know, your metabolism or whatnot but it is also a piece of hardware that combines perhaps technologies like information uh, sorry internet of things um, internet of things um, uh, bluetooth in order to give uh, and bluetooth in order to give any user real time analytics and uh, you know real time analytics and based on those analytics suggestions on what that user should or should not be eating so any human purchaser or the user of this product is using the hardware, uh, you know, but actually only benefits from that hardware uh, when uh, it, uh, you know, it actually generates real-time analytics on their phones and also gives, gives them suggestions on their food intake. Uh, Lumen is actually taking information from breath, then executing systematic analysis on the data in order to provide, uh, you know, uh, with its users, uh, the end result, which is actually, you know, better decisions in, you know, uh, eating habits. So Lumen is actually a product which uh, uses analytics uh, in order to, uh, you know, make, uh, in order to make its users better decisions, make its users decisions. Uh, guys, can you hear me uh, fine right now? Uh, guys, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, all right. It seems to be normal now. My voice somehow actually went away. So uh, I hope you. I hope you, I hope you guys actually uh, caught what I was actually saying. So what I was trying to say was that you know, Lumen uh, as a product uh, is uh, you know something that combines multiple technologies like Internet of Things, Bluetooth, and then, you know, 
on top of that builds a layer of analytics so essentially lumen is actually a piece of hardware uh, but it actually also is uh, you know uh, a decision maker for you because it provides you with uh, you know a real time analytics on your metabolism so you can actually make better decisions okay uh, all right uh, thank you for actually letting me know that the sound is clear now okay um moving ahead uh, now we just talked about what is analytics but you know what is business analytics business analytics is again you know business information resulting from the systematic analysis of data or statistics uh, it's so i mean it's the same definition in this case you are actually just processing business information and actually the resulting or the resulting uh, you know analysis uh, of the data or statistics is what you call actually business analytics um uh, and uh, for this i've actually you know like i just want to show you uh, a small video by actually uh, google where google business analysts use data in order to actually make better decisions My name is Rachel Colson, and I am a senior product analyst. Hi, my name is Wei Yang. I'm a product analyst. My name is Dan Blum. I'm a business analyst. A business analyst analyzes data to find different insights that will drive a business impact. And we analyze products and we drive decisions around those products and figure out how how to make a product better. What users like. We really want to understand our users, and the main role is to make sure we have a really strong culture around data and using data to inform and drive our decisions. We're all very passionate about data. We get very excited about looking at a new data source. There are just a million questions that you have to ask before you launch and after you launch. What are we trying to make happen? How can we prove it quantitatively? And are we confident in that? Right now, I'm in the YouTube data science team. We guide all of YouTube on things like product direction, through experimentation and analysis. We want to make developers successful, so we look at what developers think success looks like and try to help them achieve that. Being a product analyst at Google is unpredictable, but it's always exciting. Google has a unique scale, which is very global, which you're not going to get anywhere else. So even if you make a small improvement, I mean, multiply that by a billion, that can definitely be worth your time. To have a say in the direction that data science is going is something that really sets apart that experience at Google over other companies. Google encourages you to, you know, be open with your manager and have your manager support you in looking for something that is going to be fulfilling for you professionally and personally. Google is set up as a, a company to allow people to take risks. In some cases, you're taking a chance at looking at that data when the business or the rest of the world thinks it's uh, geeky or, or ridiculous. If we never try, we'll never know. Okay, uh, so all right. So, um, I mean, this second example, I'll just quickly go through it. I just BA don't... blocks the building blocks for your BA career. So we had a question come in uh, from one of our community members asking about. Sorry about that. So I'm just actually going to quickly go through this example, and the reason I showed this example was uh, that. Um, um, I mean, 
what has job roles like business analysts got to do with data analytics? Because you heard these analysts at Google actually talk a lot about that, you know, their decision were, uh, you know, primarily structured around, uh, you know, a lot of data. So product analysts at a, at a lot of uh, companies, including Google, uh, you know, uh, drive product specific decisions uh, by looking at the data that the product is generating. This data is also critical in making not only major changes, uh, but also minor tweaks to the product uh, so that the performance can be optimized uh, and the monetization or the profitability of the product can be maximized. So the video actually also talks about, uh, you know, setting product direction through experimentation and analysis, which again requires skills in data or business analytics. Um, and, uh, so these, uh, you know, this is this is why you know analytics and business analytics has actually become such an important part of uh, you know our uh, daily life or work life because of the fact that uh, you know everything is actually being driven by you know data. Uh, all the decisions are being driven by data. Uh, and now moving on to the next slide, I would actually like to talk about the different stages of analytics and business analytics. So there are primarily four stages of business analytics, uh, and I would like you guys to envision these four steps, uh, you know, as a part of a single process. Let's assume that you are a data analyst working for a telecom operator, and your boss asks you to pull a report on a new product that you guys launched one month ago. Uh, on looking at the data, you sort of find out that you know this product that you launched one month ago is doing worse than the other other competitive products or other competitors. Uh, this is what you call descriptive analytics. It's all about what has been happening in the past and the focus is primarily on the past. Uh, now moving to diagnostic ana analytics. Diagnostic analytics is why is something happening? So, I mean, based on uh, the data that you just pulled uh, okay, uh, you would need to come up with the reasons that why your product is actually doing badly. So whenever you come up with the reasons based on your data as to what is, uh, why something is happening, uh, you uh, are actually performing diagnostic analytics. Um, and the third step of this value chain is the predictive analytics. And predictive analytics is all about using the past data in order to predict the future. This is where uh, you know, you hear a lot about uh, the usage of machine learning models, uh, and this is a very important part of the, uh, you know, whole business analytics value chain, uh, but believe it or not, but all of these, uh, you know, these, these four uh, segments of this value chain are primarily handled by very different people. Uh, so the predictive analytics actually looks at what is likely to happen. So let's assume that your boss then asks you uh, that, okay, fine, uh, the product did, did really badly uh, in the last one month, but how, uh, I mean, give me a prediction, give me uh, a number as to what would it do in the next one month. Uh, and that when you try to predict different outcomes is what we call predictive analytics. Uh, so it's all about an attempt to predict the future based on past data. Um, uh, based on your predictive out predicted outcomes, when you try to prescribe or come up with the most optimum solution or a way uh, or an action is what is uh, prescriptive analytics, which is actually the fourth item in this value chain. Um, and uh, in prescriptive analytics, uh, you just try to uh, attempt to take the optimum decision out of the predicted outcomes. That's, uh, you're actually not crunching any numbers. You're actually looking at the outcomes of your predictive, uh, predicted uh, you know, model or multiple models. And you're just trying to prescribe that what is the best course of action for uh, you to get out of any situation that you're actually facing. Uh, Okay, and uh, moving on to uh, the next slide. Before we actually move ahead, uh, it is important to you know declutter things over here uh, and understand that what is actually driving this revolution in data. Um, it is actually important to declutter, you know, the fluff that is around 
uh, you know, uh, this business analytics, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, I mean, uh, industry and the buzzwords, uh, you know, we, we need to look beyond those buzzwords. Uh, and uh, what we really need to understand is what is at the core of what is actually driving this change in the way we do business. Uh, not only how we do business, how we plan our daily routines, how we manage our finances, how we actually travel. All of this is being revolutionized because of, you know, uh, you know, data and data analytics. So the primary thing that is actually driving all of this is actually data. But what is data? By definition, data is simply a collection of facts such as numbers, words, measurements, observations or just descriptions of things. Uh, but me personally, I actually like to uh, define data as something that is, you know, everywhere. I mean, everything around is around us is right now, like data, it's, for example, I mean, the number of breaths that you take, uh, the number of times you hear uh, your actually heart beats in a minute, the number of times we log into a particular website, um, or likes and emoticons on a particular platform or tweets or number of tickets and traffic violations, how many glasses of water that we drink every day, how many times we eat in a day, how many times we can actually, we actually chew what we eat, uh, what, how many miles do we drive every day, how many steps do we walk every day, uh, what is uh, our individual carbon footprint. This, these all are data points uh, how many times we interact with our bank. I mean, this is important data for the banks uh, that we are potential customers of or are actually customers of. How many times we withdraw money from our ATMs. Uh, they, these, these all are actually data points. So data is now ubiquitous. It's actually all around us. So um, it's all around us. And believe it or not, but only some of these data sources are new. And most of these data points are actually old. They, they have been around us for a very long time. But uh, why are we only noticing and capturing these data points now is because of our, uh, you know, ability to, uh, you know, yes, process data, but also actually, uh, you know, store it. So, I mean, moving on to the next slide, this tells us the uh, this actually graph in a class uh, tells us the global output of data on a daily basis. I mean, we are generating 2.5 quintillions of data, uh, you know, uh, daily now. And uh, believe it or not, new information generated in a minute per human uh, was actually 102 MB in 2020 and 90% of all data online was generated in the two years alone. So essentially, since the inception of, uh, since the inception of internet, uh, everything, 90% of the data that's present on internet was actually what was generated in the last two years. So you can actually, you can actually fathom or actually think about the, the volume of the data that humanity is actually generating as a whole. Okay, um, and uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, yeah, before actually I move on, um, the, I would actually also like to talk about the three V's of, uh, you know, um, data. I mean, so the three V's, which are the volume, velocity, and the variety of the data, as I just said, uh, you know, have actually exponentially increased in the last 10 to 15 years. And so has our ability to store data. It has actually exponentially increased as well. This is why we are now actually seeing this data revolution around us. Because now we have not only the computing power to actually compute all that data, but now we have the storage and the processing, uh, processing capability to actually process that uh, huge amounts of data. So the importance of uh, analytics today. So in a crux, 
uh, analytics, uh, you know, is primarily what's actually running everything now. Uh, according to a recent study by MicroStrategy, companies worldwide are using data to, you know, uh, boost cost and cost efficiency. 60% of the respondents uh, of the survey actually said that. Um, uh, in addition to that, 52% of the respondents said that uh, they are actually uh, using uh, data analytics to monitor and improve financial performance. 57% uh, of uh, you know, the respondents said that they are actually using uh, data to drive strategy and actually change. Uh, and uh, this is really important uh, because based on these numbers, uh, one can see that companies worldwide, all across the world, are actually increasingly deciding on investing in data. And this actually survey found out that 71% of global enterprises will increase their investment in analytics and analytics-based systems. So data analytics, business analytics, uh, and uh, this as a domain is here to stay. It's, it's not just going to go away. Uh, it's not a fab. It's not fluff. Uh, it's something that's going to stay away. Companies, large and small, uh, are actually going to invest heavily in the future in data and who does not is actually going to get wiped out uh, because data is, as I said, it's, it's actually the new oil. Okay, I think we have some questions. Uh, Mohammed Khan, uh, you can actually write down your question uh, and we can actually uh, take your questions at the end when we have the Q&A session. Uh, thank you for your patience. Okay, um, so moving on to the next slide. So what is what, what, what is the value of an analytical system? Uh, the value of an analytical system is actually, I mean, if, if you just like, uh, um, if you act, if you actually, um, uh, guys, I would really uh, request you guys to actually just keep your questions for the end when we have the QA and A session and I can actually answer all of your questions at the end. Thank you so very much. So uh, any system has to bring in some value uh, and the same goes for an analytical system. Uh, you're investing in hardware and software and that system that you have invested in is supposed to provide a return on investment. Uh, three core, you know, a value uplifts that an analytical system brings in is actually informed decision-making. Uh, it leads to greater revenue and it actually improves operational efficiency. So when I say informed decision-making, an example of this is Uber. Uber actually in 2018 upgraded its uh, internal ticketing system, which it calls customer obsession ticket assistant. Uh, it's a tool that uses machine learning and natural language processing to help agents improve their speed and accuracy when responding to support tickets. While uh, they actually found out but that by using analytics, in fact, prescriptive analytics, they examined that, uh, that the new iteration of the product that they implemented was actually doing a lot better than the former iteration. Then they also used A-B testing which is a method of comparing the outcomes of two different choices uh, to find uh, and determine that the updated product led to faster service, more accurate resolution, uh, re uh, resolution recommendations, and higher customer satisfaction scores. These insights not only streamlined actually Uber's ticket resolution process, but save uh, the company close to $480 million, which is almost a half a billion dollars. So that is a major saving uh, that an analytical system and its implementation actually brought in. Uh, how does an analytical system actually uh, lead to greater revenue? An example of this is actually a study that was conducted by uh, McKinsey. McKinsey actually in its study found out, found out that uh, those organizations that invest in big data uh, actually yield a 6% average increase in profits. Uh, and this increase in profit actually jumps to 9% uh, 
if the investment is consistently done uh, over five years. So an investment, uh, sorry, and a profit increase of six to 9% just by actually systematically investing in analytical systems. So you can actually make better decisions. Uh, I mean, th there's nothing better than that. I think that's a great return on investment. Uh, and how does uh, how does an analytical system improve operational efficiency? An example of that is uh, a study by KPMG. In fact, it's not a study; it's a case study by KPMG, uh, where actually KPMG found out that uh, a mobile network operator or multiple mobile network operators, uh, you know, uh, they were actually leveraging data to foresee outages seven days before they occur. So um, they, I mean, using analytical systems, they were actually able to predict where an outage on their network is going to happen seven days before that outage was actually going, that outage actually occurred. Now, if you're armed with this sort of information, uh, you can prevent any outage by more effectively timing maintenance uh, and enabling it not only, uh, and actually this allows you to save not only operational, operational costs, but it actually also ensures that it uh, keeps your assets, your physical assets, uh, in optimal, uh, you know, in optimal shape and uh, at, at 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 the best performance level. Okay. So now I'm actually quickly going to move to. Uh, the section where I talk about Excel and uh, its role in analytics and why do we actually think that Excel plays a pivotal role uh, if you're actually stepping into the world of analytics. Um, Excel is the key to analytics, right? And, uh, but why do we think that, you know, Excel is the key to analytics? What do I mean by, uh, you know, uh, Excel is the key to analytics? So they have like enumerated four major reasons why we think that, you know, Excel is the key to analytics. Excuse me. So first of all is, uh, you know, it's raw data friendly. So Excel, uh, let me actually give you an example of that. The best way to explain that is to just show you, you know, an example. So I've actually compiled a list of the different formats and the different data types that actually Excel can handle. And as per my estimate, uh, Excel can handle close to 41 different types of data. So that can include, uh, you know, your normal numbers. It can actually use uh, uh, CSV. Uh, it can actually uh, use pic uh, it can actually it can actually contain data that is based on pictures bitmap uh, it can actually handle textual data it can actually handle html based data uh, it can handle uh, you know text files csv uh, pdf uh, so i mean it's it's raw data friendly there is a lot of room for uh, you know actually in importing the raw data into Excel and then manipulating it. Uh, okay, I've got like uh, a couple of people who raised their hands. Um, just a second. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, so guys, we will have a QA and session at the end of this, uh, you know, uh, webinar. And I would really recommend that you guys write down your questions uh, and ask me those questions at the end. Okay, uh, so this is what I actually meant by, you know, it's raw data friendly. It's actually really easy for, uh, you know, uh, to import a lot of raw data into Excel and actually manipulate it as per your choice. All right, um, easy number crunching. What does that mean? I mean, what is number crunching? You know, we hear a lot about, you know, number crunching, uh, but what is number crunching? Uh, by number crunching, we actually are referring to activities or processes that are concerned with numbers or mathematical calculations. Uh, for example, in finance, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in statistics, uh, in mathematics, uh, you know, you do a lot, lot of calculations, you do a lot of number crunching. 
nowadays we have a lot of software uh, in which actually the computer does the number crunching but when it comes to manual intervention and believe me in the corporate world a lot of manual intervention is required uh, in a number crunching scenario uh, excel is actually the number one go to tool because excel makes it really easy because of its uh, you know interactive gui or graphical user interface to actually change the numbers manipulate them wrangle them derangle them uh, so uh, i mean uh, i mean excel is a great tool when it actually comes to basic number crunching and basic basic number manipulation uh, the third biggest reason why excel is i would say the the king of analytics is because you know of the data analysis abilities that it provides uh, what does mean, what that means is that excel is actually a great tool for data analysis and allows for easy management of numbers so you can easily manage numbers in uh, excel uh, and i mean there are over close to 400 functions in excel that you can use to actually do different sort of analysis or actually do different sort of uh, you know data wrangling uh, some of the most popular data analysis functions that you would use on a day to day basis uh, you know uh, if you adopt the field of data analytics are uh, like concatenate uh, the length function which actually works really well with uh, textual analysis the count and the count if function the days and the network days function uh the sum if the average if function uh and when i say the sum if function uh wherever you find an if with an excel function uh that means that it is summing something but then you can actually uh, make that sum conditional to something so whenever i say sum if that means sum a column or uh, a bundle of rows but then just make sure that this specific condition is met the same goes for average if uh we look up uh, i'm going to show you uh an example of h look up which is actually a sister function of we look up and that is a really powerful tool which allows you to match uh you know data from two different lists uh and actually uh, bring out commonalities between two different lists and uh you know min and max function that is actually a great way to uh, sort of uh, you know uh, congest your data and look at the data in a, uh, 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 in a in a bird's eye view um the fourth reason that makes excel really great is you know it's easy visualization um uh, based on the data that you provide excel you can actually go ahead and develop a number of visualizations and excel has close to 12 different major uh, types of chart charts uh with every type of chart having multiple subtypes so there is a plethora of different visualizations that are available inside excel that are easy to deploy based on the data that you provide and the greatest part is that based on the numbers that you provide excel excel actually has a recommendation engine running inside its uh, software and it can suggest you on what might be the best type of visualization for your data so for a gui based interactive software that is uh, that that you can use uh, to manipulate or you know change or wrangle data this is really great uh, because i don't know if any of you have actually used uh, uh, python or uh, you know libraries in python which are especially used for visualization like cbon and matplotlib and believe me making a graph in matplotlib and cbon it's a really hard task i mean but excel it 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 it, it makes uh, you know it makes this task like an easy piece of cake uh and moving ahead uh now let's just talk about um how really excel excel helps us uh, you know in the corporate world i'm actually not going to spend a lot of time uh, you know over here um, um because i mean most of those people who are actually you know working over here uh, are actually working professionals would actually know that how excel makes their life a lot easier 
but I just wanted to enumerate some user cases over here, uh, you know, as to how Excel sort of fits in into different roles uh, when it comes to the corporate world. So number one, I mean, finance accounting, uh, financial accounting and financial budgeting. I mean, to every of my six, seven organizations that I have been to, um, finance and accounting and budgeting, finance, accounting and budgeting is primarily done on Excel. Yes, organizations do use uh, different other softwares. Uh, yeah, so, uh, organizations do actually uh, use different softwares, other softwares, but Excel is by far the most widely used uh, you know, software for uh, you know, financial accounting, financial budgeting, record keeping, uh, you know, salary management. Um, so financial accounting and in budgeting, uh, Excel is used really heavily. Uh, in marketing and product management, you would see a lot of marketing and product managers who actually use Excel on a day-to-day -day basis in order to automate, uh, you know, uh, since they're managing different products, they automate data pulling and parsing uh, by using open database connectivity plugins, uh, the QD SQL databases and have the, res the results printed to a table in Excel. And then they can actually measure the performance of their marketing campaign or measure the performance of their product, uh, you know, over time uh, by simply connecting uh, their software with uh, an SQL database uh, or different sources of information uh, that, that are available or that their internal systems are generating. Human resource planning absolutely is done. On Excel, uh, I have just recently exited an organization where the entire KPI uh, set of the entire organization was actually being managed on uh, Excel. And uh, they had internal systems, uh, sorry, internal uh, predefined uh, you know, Excel sheets where uh, they were actually used in order to uh, plan their human resource and actually manage and track their key performance indicators. So, um, um, and contact organization and communication, uh, that's again, another place where actually Excel really helps us a lot by organizing our contacts and helping us in, you know what, uh, generating or developing or maintaining, you know, emailing lists, uh, phone number lists, WhatsApp group lists. So we can actually use Excel to actually uh, organize uh, organizational contacts and manage the communication, uh, you know, that's happening uh, from inside the organization to uh, external stakeholders. Um, and similarly, event planning is another domain where actually Excel also helps uh, in actually, uh, you know, uh, making the tasks a lot easier. Um, now, I would actually like to share some examples uh, you know, of uh, productivity and profitability uh, that's being driven by Excel. So I just wanted to actually show you guys some of the use cases uh, that I've sort of compiled together. Uh, these use cases, I'm actually, again, I'm not going to go really deeply into these use cases. I'm actually just going to briefly touch upon these examples because I just want to give you a flavor of what, cap what Excel is actually capable of uh, and, uh, but I don't want to drill a lot deeper into it, uh, because I really don't want to, you know, don't want to, you know, spend a lot of time on these examples. So the first example that I'm actually going to use over here is where I want to show you guys how an Excel sheet is actually, uh, fueling a Power BI dashboard. I'm just going to, you know, quickly minimize this and show you guys. So uh, this is uh, an Excel sheet. Uh, it contains uh, uh, it contains a data set from a retail business, to be precise. Uh, uh, due to some you know data uh, security concerns, I've actually black blackened out uh, some of the uh, you know some of the columns over here. Uh, but I mean, it would still do the trick. That's not a problem. I just want you to get the gist of the whole concept that's working over here. So this is time series data, if you guys actually understand 
understand what time series data is. So time series is data is that you have uh, uh, you have data for multiple timestamps. Uh, you know, uh, and th for me in this data set, that times those timestamps actually span across two different years. Uh, starting from 2018, sorry, three different years, starting from 2018, going all the way to 2020. So if you just look at the structure of the data, there are those two 8,35,667 rows in sheet number one, which is 2018 and 19. Uh, these in millions is close to 0 0.8 million rows. Uh, and in 2000, uh, 2020, uh, we have close to, in the sheet 2020, we have close to 0 0.2 million, uh, you know, uh, rows of data. Uh, so what we're trying to actually do is uh, that we are trying to organize uh, this time series data, uh, which is primarily showing the sales of particular outlets, uh, you know, uh, and we want to actually create a dashboard out of this data. Uh, so there are multiple variables that are actually uh, you know showing up over here, uh, and I actually use this data set to uh, to actually develop this. So this is a Power BI dashboard, which is actually using this Excel file as its backend. And the reason I'm actually showing you this example is I want you to understand that. The, the, the flexibility actually Excel provides you and its connectivity power. So it can actually connect with Power BI, uh, which is actually a business intelligence tool and serve as an input, uh, serve as an input to this, uh, you know, um, dashboard. So this dashboard is, uh, you know, uh, is a high level dashboard, which actually gives you the sales numbers, the total number of orders, uh, for that particular detail chain, you can actually move in and out of different time periods, uh, you know, um, in this data set, which is actually using the Excel file at the back end. And uh, you can look at different years, uh, different countries, multiple states, uh, cities, and you can even look at particular stores. So. Uh, the idea behind this is to actually make you sort of realize that this table of numbers, uh, you know, in this simple Excel file is what is actually fueling this, uh, you know, Power BI dashboard. Uh, so imagine, you know, uh, when you actually get your hands on your organizational data, what, what, what magic you can actually do with it. And um, uh, the cool part is that I don't need to do uh, you know a lot of manipulation or a lot of updating in order to refresh this uh, you know dashboard what i all need to do what i simply need to do is actually i just simply update my excel file uh, which is actually this file and then i can simply press refresh uh, on my dashboard and my dashboard simply actually gets updated so if i want to add uh, the sales for uh, another date or an additional date, let's say 9, uh, 20, 2020, I just go ahead and add uh, the data set uh, or add to the data set, which is in this Excel file, the new data at the bottom over here, and then just simply go ahead and press refresh over here and my dashboard actually gets updated. The reason I really wanted to make this dashboard in Excel, but there were two limitations. One of the limitation uh, which is the limitation of Excel was that it cannot handle more than uh, 10,48,576 rows or a million rows. Uh, okay, and oh, once you start reaching that limit, Excel starts to get really slow. Uh, that was one of the reasons I actually had to shift this over to Power BI because there were like huge amounts of data. And secondly, uh, I wanted this Excel dashboard to be shareable across my enterprise as a dashboard. And that is one of another limitations that actually Excel has. So I, uh, that, that's why I actually chose Power BI or, uh, but this thing that I've actually made in Power BI was easily, uh, you know, uh, you know, replicatable in this Excel file as well.
Uh, I see some raised hands. Um, okay. Uh, okay, uh, moving forward to the next example. Sorry for that uh, entertainment interval. Okay, um, I'm just going to now show you uh, a project dashboard that, uh, you know, I created, uh, you know, uh, working for like one of my, you know, former employers. Uh, and this again gives you an insight into the power of visualization uh, that actually actually provides you. Uh, so again, I am not going to tell you how to build this, uh, you know, dashboard in this webinar. Uh, that is something that we leave to a proper, you know, uh, class or a full day lecture. But uh, my whole idea of showing you this over here is to make you realize that uh, Excel is actually a really powerful tool and what makes it what makes it so acceptable in the corporate sector. So this is sorry about that. This is this is uh, an Excel dashboard that is tracking a project. And the name of the project was Awareness Campaign Sponsorship Project. Uh, and uh, this is something that I handled between 2011 and 2015. Sorry, it says to date, but you know, I left um, that organization where I was actually managing this project in 2015. So you can actually see over here that this uh, one page sort of highlights uh, the entire uh, the, the, the entire uh, the entire project. It actually highlights the performance of the entire project. What it actually tells you is that in these three years, this uh, you know project actually received close to 113 sponsorship requests, and out of those those 113, 106 uh, you know sponsorships were you know actually uh, approved, and uh, 34 million rupees worth of money was distributed, and it actually also gives you the amount that is pending distribution. Uh, it uh, then moving to the right, uh, actually gives you a breakup of the year-wise performance uh, of how that uh, project was doing, uh, you know, since its inception, because it actually started, uh, this project was started in 2008, but it concluded in 2013 and 14. And it actually, uh, this dashboard actually tells you the number of events that were sponsored under this uh, project uh, and then it actually also tells you the per year amount that was disseminated under this project uh, per year exactly and uh, then it actually shows this information in a graphical manner over here to make it more amenable acceptable to the eyes on the right hand side it actually gives you uh, an overview of the total amounts, uh, total amount of uh, events that were funded uh, throughout these years. So uh, this column is actually being represented over here. Uh, if you move to the lower middle left, you actually get uh, you know the uh, quarterwise breakup of uh, the entire project uh, broken down yearwise. And the coolest thing is that all of this is actually being run by uh, by actually a single pivot table uh, that I've actually, you know, sort of hidden somewhere at the back. And all of that is actually running at this, uh, you know, this, this one single dashboard, uh, one page of dashboard. And uh, look how strong the visualization is and how strong the impact is because it is capturing the entire essence of that project uh, you know, through really cool visualizations, uh, really cool, uh, you know, uh, tabular formats, uh, and it's making it really easier for the decision maker to understand that, uh, you know, uh, what sort of data that he's looking at and what sort of a decision that he needs to make. And all of this on your, uh, you know, very simple daily uh, used Excel. Uh, of course, I'm not saying that this is the best dashboard in the world. And of course, you guys can make, once you guys get your hands on, uh, dashboards, 
you can actually make a lot better dashboards, but this is just an example of the robustness and the power of Excel and the power it actually places in your hands, uh, you know, uh, as an analyst, and you can do so much uh, with the capability of Excel to actually uh, develop these uh, really cool dashboards. Uh, moving on to another user example, usage example. Uh, okay, example number three is where I track uh the product sales of a particular uh of a particular uh you know of a particular product that we launched uh and uh i actually sort of created a dashboard for that and uh let me actually show you that real quickly so uh what's happening over here is that uh, what we're trying to do is we are actually trying to track the sales uh, of a particular product which has different types of denominations. Uh, these are actually card sales and these card sales have different de denominations. And I'm actually trying to track uh, the, uh, the target uh, which was actually set by the higher management against the sales that's happening every day. And all of that is done uh, using uh, this uh, very simple tabular format, which is running at the back and is actually collecting all of the data. So the problem which I faced while actually developing uh, this, uh, you know, dashboard uh, and which actually Excel helped me overcome was that uh, there were 15 different regions. So entire Pakistan or in our entire country was divided into 15 different sales regions and sales were actually occurring in all of these regions simultaneously. So I had to develop a system where I could actually not only track the sales of these individual, uh, you know, uh, regions, but also accumulate and congest them into a single number to show the national sales. So this is what you see over here. You see the CTR, which is the region. You see the LTR, which is a different region. You see the FTR, which is a different uh, different region. And you then you see their individual monthly sales uh, broken down on a daily basis. The sales are not only on the basis of denominations, but then you actually get the total achievement out of a particular day. What's the target outstanding? The achievement to date is the accumulated. Uh, you know, some of what was achieved by that region for that month and uh, the percentage of the accumulated achievement, uh, the daily average loading that was happening in the market and the daily, daily average required to meet the targets. Now, all of this combined together to actually develop this very simple graph, which very eloquently, very elegantly showed that what was the target per day that needed to be met and what was actually being achieved in the market in reality. <clears throat> and this is where uh, Excel actually helped me develop this gap analysis methodology, gap, gap analysis mentality uh, to actually, which, which was required in that position where I was serving. So I could actually pinpoint that we were experiencing a lot of gap between what were the actual targets and what was the actual achievement. So, um, so this is another example of a dashboard that, uh, you know, you guys can actually, uh, you know, take a note from that, how you can actually manage a product or manage, manage, manage product sales, uh, using actually Excel. So again, I would emphasize over here that this is not, uh, the best of the dashboards and you guys can probably make a lot better dashboards. But this is again just an example of the power that Excel actually gives you. Uh, okay, example number four is I'm actually going to show you how you can actually run uh, a statistical test on uh, in Excel. So Excel uh, gives you the ability to run a multivariate regression. I don't know if you guys have actually uh, heard about regressions, but regressions in a crux in simplicity are uh, statistical 
uh, you know, a it's, just, it's actually a statistical methodology that allows you to check causation between uh, a Y variable and multiple X variable. So what I'm trying to do in this, uh, you know, small uh, example that I've set up for you guys is that uh, I think that there is a relationship between uh, our store sales and the inventory that is being purchased by the store. So anyone who is actually familiar uh, with the regression analysis was actually, would actually understand this a lot better. But uh, I'm, what I'm going to try to do now is actually I'm going to try uh, to find the strength of this relationship. And uh, then I'm going to try to predict that what a $1 change in uh, a $1 increase in, you know, let's say inventory purchase can mean for the sales numbers. So let's just uh, do that right now. We have to go to the data analysis tab where actually where we have the uh, are, uh, you know, uh, regression statistical function available. So you have to tell Excel um, what is your Y variable. And then you have to tell Excel that what is your, what are your X variables. Okay, it's giving me an error that uh, regression X and Y range must have the same number of rows, uh, sample values regardless of labels. Okay, that means that uh, there are missing values perhaps inside this. Let's try that again. A second, let me fix that very quickly. I think there are zero values inside this, inside our data range, and that's what's causing this. Okay, so once I replaced the missing values with zeros, uh, you get an output on the regression analysis. So uh, this is the result of the regression that we ran. And I am actually not going to get into, in fact, let me actually just quickly fix this. Seems to be a problem over here. Uh, just a second. Yeah, so uh, we were missing these labels earlier. So I just wanted to fix that, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, I'm actually not going to explain, uh, you know, what's happening over here, but this, uh, I mean, regression is actually a pretty complex or linear regression is a pretty complex concept that you learn in statistics is heavily used in machine learning and data sciences as well. Uh, it's specially used in training uh, machine learning models or supervised models. Uh, but what I know by running this regression is that um, that uh, when my uh, when my when my um, uh, when when a store actually spends one dollar extra on purchasing boxes, uh, my sales actually actually goes up by nineteen dollars. So this is the sort of analysis that you can actually do in Excel. Uh, and 
this is only the tip of the iceberg. Excel can actually give you access to a lot of more tools, you know, that you can actually utilize in order to, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of statistical regressional, uh, you know, mathematical analysis. Uh, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I just, again, wanted to emphasize the power of Excel, uh, you know, rather than actually, uh, you know, like show, show showing my statistical proness i just wanted to showcase the power of excel and what you can actually do with it so really moving on to the next uh, example and uh, so the pivot tables and the pivot charts let's see uh, that's another example that's again another tool uh, that actually uh, can make your life a lot easier so the pivot table, uh, the pivot table is actually uh, what? What is a pivot? A pivot is actually uh, how would I say that? It's actually it's uh, it's 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 a it's a summation engine. It lets you sum up data uh, and actually reorganize it. So what I have over here is again, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, data from multiple stores. Uh, for multiple months and for multiple years. And I want to congest this data in a manner where it actually becomes more consumable by me. By me. So what I can do is I can actually simply run um, uh, run this by like a pivot uh, table. So if you insert a pivot table, uh, it actually pops up a new sheet where you can then organize your data in a manner that is actually more acceptable for you. So what I mean by that is earlier, I was actually in this sheet seeing all the stores separately, but right now I want to look at all the stores and their sales combined together yearly. So all I need to do in order to do that is just to put in the store number in the rows and then the total store sales in the values. So this is the summed up sales for both the years, but I can actually go ahead and break down that sales on the basis of years by just simply doing this. So now I have a much better view of how my stores were performing over two years, over two years, all right? And then I can actually go ahead and do like a bundle of, you know, comparative analysis or whatever I want to do. So this is the power of the pivot. And this is what actually uh, Excel really, really got popular off, you know, because of this revolutionary way in which you can actually, in which you could actually reorganize your data. So the pivot, the, the pivot actually allows you to do that. Uh, and this is a very simple example of one of, again, the functions that uh, you know Excel has, and which can actually make your life a lot easier. Um, in addition to that, you can actually you know add more fields to this analysis. Uh, you can actually view it in different ways uh, that are to your liking. So analysis becomes really easier with uh, with, with the pivot table. And Excel actually makes it really possible for you to actually, you know, uh, congest and digest this data. Uh, moving on to what if analysis, and I'm actually just going to highlight only one of the, uh, you know, analysis that are available under what if analysis. So let me actually just lock this up really quickly. So we're actually going to use, um, we're actually going to use the solver, uh, which is a sub part of the what if analysis. And what is actually a solver? Actually a solver uh, allows you to do backward working uh, in order to actually test different scenarios. So let's assume that uh, your boss comes to you and he says that, and, and you're the sales manager. And he says that, you know, really cool that you sold 324 units in the last week. 
and brought in a total sales of 39,852. But in the next week, I want you to make a sales of 60,000. And you're left guessing what would uh, be the best way uh, or what would be the number of units that I need to sell in order to actually achieve a target of 60,000. One of the ways to do that is to guess. You just put in the numbers and then you keep on uh, and then you keep on, you know, guessing and guessing and guessing. Sorry about that. I'm guessing uh, what is going to be the unit sold in order to get the 60,000 number. An easier way to do that is actually just to uh, deploy uh, goal seek, which is actually a reverse calculator. So what you can do is you can actually tell goal seek to set the cell set this cell to a value of 60,000 because that is your sales target in the next month by changing the unit sold. And once you do that, it actually gives you the answer. So now you know, without actually guessing that 185 units need to be sold at a price of 324 to make a total sales of 60,000. Looks like a small function but it is a it is it is one of uh, one of the functions that is out of a family of functions that excel actually provides you and puts in your dis uh, puts at your disposal in order to do different types of statistical and mathematical analysis uh, and data crunching and number crunching Uh, looking, uh, moving on to our second last example, uh, let's say uh, the, the horizontal lookups. Uh, we did talk about uh, uh, H lookups. Uh, we, we did talk about uh, V lookups uh, earlier. Uh, they are actually a very powerful tool. And this is one of the sister functions of uh, V lookup. Uh, it's called the H lookup. So let's assume uh, in this example that you have data sets uh, which has different store numbers. Uh, displayed horizontally, not vertically, and the sum uh, of store sales is also displayed horizontally, not vertically. Very inconvenient, right? Uh, very, uh, very inconvenient. So let's assume your boss actually comes to you and asks you to look up these store numbers and their sales, you know, uh, in this list. Uh, one way to do that is to actually manually go and check the entire list for these store numbers and then bring in the total sales that's available, uh, you know, in the other sheet. Or you can actually simply use HLOOKUP, which is actually, again, a very powerful tool. I must emphasize on that. You can actually set up HLOOKUP very quickly. So I'm not going to explain as to how am I actually, you know, sort of setting this up, but what I'm just in a crux, what I'm telling the formula is to look up what value, where, in what row, and uh, whether that value uh, is supposed to be an exact match or a close to match. And once you do that, uh, it actually pulls up the right number. And I will actually show you that it is the right number very quickly. Let me actually just lock these cells up and drag and drop this formula so that it gets copied across. So very easily, I was actually able to uh, come up with the store sales, uh, the correct store sales, which I can actually vouch for that these are the correct sales. And just remember that this is store number one, two, two, three, six, six, and the total sales is 20, uh, 268487. Let's go over here and then just simply look up this value. Okay, interesting. Uh, 
Okay. I think due to this being a formula, it's actually not looking up that value. Just a second. One, two, three, three, six, six. Yeah, so here is that value. And if you can actually look at this store number and this value 268488, it is the exact value 268488. So HLOOKUP made my life a lot easier without having me to go manually back and actually pulling in at the correct uh, sales for uh, the uh, adequate source. Moving on to our last example, uh, and that example is of how you can actually do text management in Excel. Uh, I have a bundle of tweets over here and let's assume my boss comes to me and asks me to actually develop uh, uh, um, uh, 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 an, an NLP model or natural language processing model. But uh, what he wants me to do is uh, he just wants me to look at the first number or the first uh, the first word uh, in the tweets. So although I can actually do different types of text analysis and use different types of functions uh, on this textual data. But I am actually going to use one of my favorite, uh, you know, uh, functions over here, which is actually the delimited. And uh, it's going to help me to real quickly uh, split. Sorry, I don't. It's actually going to help me uh, real quickly to split the data and just actually leave out uh, the first word. So in a crux, I am actually just going to tell uh, the delimiter uh, that it needs to uh, split uh, all of these tweets wherever it finds some sort of space. And once I tell uh, Excel and the delimiter or the, uh, uh, or the text to column uh, you know, option that I clicked on, it actually does exactly that. So now I have uh, all the words separated out uh, into each individual individual cell. And now I can actually make, make any sort of model that I want to uh, without having to uh, manually actually split uh, all of these tweets uh, and actually segregate out, uh, you know, the first word. So just think about uh, the power Excel actually gives us and the different sort of functions that have, uh, you know, been made available in, uh, you know, Excel. And they make the life of a data analyst really, really easy. Uh, be it, uh, you know, accounting data, be it uh, uh, textual data, be it any sort of data. So it, it makes, uh, you know, the life of any data analyst really easy. So these were some of the use cases that I had actually compiled together. And uh, now uh, just moving real quickly towards the conclusion. Uh, I just wanna, before I actually close this whole, uh, you know, webinar, I just wanna um, discuss what keeps Excel relevant as an analytical tool, analytical, uh, analytical tool or analytics tool. And uh, some of the reasons, main reasons, four reasons of that is that, that it has an interactive GUI. It's graphical user interface is interactive. You can manipulate the data uh, by actually going into cells and then you can manipulate the data. There are very few software that allow you to do that with data. Uh, if you're using Python, if you're using Power BI, if you're using Tableau, you cannot actually manipulate the data by just clicking on it and then manipulating it. That is something that actually uh, still lies with Excel. So it has a very powerful interactive GUI and uh, makes data wrangling data, changing the data in mass really easy. Uh, interacting with the data also, it, it makes it really easy. Uh, it is really simple to use. Yes, in the beginning we did say that um, it's really hard. Yes, it is a complex tool, uh, but to start off, it's a very simple. It's a very simple tool to use. I mean, you spend a week with it, and you get acquainted with the basic functions. Uh, it becomes really easy to actually handle. It sort of grows on you 
and then you can actually um, uh, then you can actually you know uh, build upon uh, your preliminary uh, you know understanding of Excel to actually. Uh, do more complex stuff uh statistical tools that you can actually add on uh, to excel uh excel is actually it has a high level of survival survivability it has been around since 1987 uh 86 87 and it 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 it, it, it has just stayed there has been no other tool that is so robust and so comprehensive as excel and that's why uh, you know it has sticked around, and uh, in fact it has stuck around. Sorry, and has actually become the bread and butter of the corporate world. I mean, in my, in my opinion, uh, Excel is actually running the corporate world. Uh, on top of that, it has the patronage of Microsoft. It was launched by Microsoft, so it's backed by a big gun. Uh, so it is a standard package uh, and comes in any uh, you know Windows operating system. Um, that's why it, its adoptability and usage has uh, morphed and grown uh, throughout the years. And now, since this there is this new data revolution, it's being used in new ways uh, more and more every day. The other day, I actually saw uh, that Jupyter notebooks have been integrated in Excel, uh, and 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 now you can actually run your code directly directly into uh, Excel. And, and you know generate outputs in Excel. Uh, on top of that, it has a lot of analytical functions. Some of them, like ten of them, I actually mentioned to you earlier. But to be honest, there are close to um, there are just give me one second. There are close to four hundred and one. Uh, it's actually taking its time to open this file because it's a pretty big file. So these are, an this is actually an accumulation of all the analytical functions that are available in Excel. And I know uh, not everyone is going to use all of these analytical functions, uh, but these are there for your usage. And if you count these, these are 413 different functions, analytical functions, uh, and formulas that are available in Excel. So it has a huge library of formulas that you can actually use uh, at, and are available at your disposal just to make your life easier and just to make your analysis uh, better. Uh, uh, in, in the scope of Excel, I'm just, as I said in the beginning, I'm actually just going to discuss really briefly uh, what are the limitations of Excel? So the scope of Excel is just going to shed some light on some of the limitations of Excel. Uh, the, the first limitation that I think Excel has is the amount of data volume that it can handle. Uh, data volume, by data volume I mean is the number of rows and the columns it can handle. Uh, you can handle close to a million rows, uh, proposed million rows and 16,384 columns in Excel. But as you start loading data into Excel, as you start loading data into Excel, uh, it becomes heavier and heavier. It slows down. It, the processing slows down. So yes, it sort of uh, you know sort of lacks in that area, uh, but it compensates for that by actually having a GUI uh, that is very interactive. So this is the cost of us having uh, an interactive GUI. Uh, when you have an interactive GUI, it actually becomes uh, slower and slower as you load data into it. Uh, secondly, troubleshooting and testing. If you have actually ever worked with Excel models, uh, it's really hard to find problems uh, if there is a problem. So essentially, if you come across, uh, if, if you have actually made an error, that error uh, is is really hard to actually uh, is really hard to actually pinpoint. And if your if the scope of that model, which actually spans over multiple sheets, uh, you know, uh, grows, that error is actually going to grow uh, with that growth. It's not actually going to limit itself to a particular area. So while making models, you have to be very careful in Excel uh, so that uh, you don't make errors first. And if you do make errors, 
you should have adequate checks and balances inside your Excel data set, Excel sheets that can actually let you uh, help in pinpointing where that error has occurred because it can become a really cumbersome task. Thirdly, uh, uh, I mean, I think consolidation is actually a huge challenge uh, in Excel and by that I mean that is in most cases end users working with the complex multi sheet model, as I said before, would have to collect data from different files and summarize those files. And then a dashboard or report would develop. Throughout this entire consolidation process, data may be subjected to numerous errors. So, uh, so while you are actually copy pasting, doing cell entry, and defining ranges, there is always room for error. And uh, that is again a cost that you have to pay for a GUI uh, that is interactive because when you can actually make changes at a cell level, uh, then there is always a possibility that you might make an error that gets compounded across different sheets. And the last uh, limitation is the scaling limitation um, of Excel. So what I mean by that is that as organizations grow, uh, data and spreadsheet based systems gets more, more, more complicated. It gets more distributed uh, because it's, it's, it's consistently compounding, right? So as you scale as an organization, yes, organizations can uh, in, 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 in uh, you know, departments can actually use Excel files, uh, you know, in order to manage their data analysis, analysis tasks, but the whole organization using Excel as a system to manage itself, to manage its operational efficiency, that would not be a good, that would not be a good idea because that, uh, since you're scaling that, uh, the, the, the sheer size of your organization is actually going to produce complications for you that Excel might have problem actually in overcoming. So, uh, Thank you very much for actually bearing me for uh, approximately uh, one and a half of like uh, one and a half, two hours. The webinar recording will be available on our YouTube channel. You can actually uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel by, uh, you know, going to this link over here at the top. And uh, our next session is, um, uh, you know, with as I told you earlier, is with uh, Mr. Vukas Arshad, who is actually going to talk about data warehouses and BI, and it's going to happen on the 14th of January. Also, don't miss our upcoming sessions. Sorry about that. Uh, our upcoming session on uh, text mining, uh, text mining use cases uh, using Lime, uh, which is by Rosaria, uh, Rosaria uh, Silipo. Now I'm actually going to open the floor for the questions. And if you have any questions, please shoot them my way. Uh, Hadi, if you're still there, um, uh, the floor is open for the questions. Thank you so much, Mohsin. Uh, um, all of you, uh, you can ask any question you want and clear your queries. Um, Mohsin, you have to unmute karna hoga attendees. Ko. Yeah, so uh, I will do that. Just give me a second. Shakir Ali Sumra, I guess he has to ask something. Just bear with me. Uh, one second. Huh? Um, just uh, say, give me a question. Please raise your hands. Uh, just, just, uh, just, 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 just,
अच्छा उनके क्वेश्चंस क्लियर हैं ही आज ओके और ऑल राइट फॉर कान आई गेस वी हैव नेक्स्ट फॉर कान यस हेलो कैन यू हियर मी यस एब्सोल्युटली या सो टू क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आई लाइक द द सेशन and i'm uh, i'm very surprised to see the uh, the way you explained uh, the relationship between bi and the data import from excel mm -hmm. um uh, initial 20 minutes i i couldn't join so i will definitely catch up with the recording uh, my question is uh, um i wanted to learn you know based on the project so where i can still wanted to uh, leave the confidentiality intact and i uh, wanted to produce you know some good visualization around analysis because when we do the analysis you know around the projects it's not uh, uh, all over the financial analysis but it is somewhere where you uh, put a scenario build up a migration plans etc etc and uh, build up some comparison reports so of course when i do it through and i'm not very you know kind of a intermediate kind of a skill in excel so it's my i can say i can i'm somewhere in between beginner and you know intermediate skill set so uh how would i do that how can i leverage your your uh, expertise in this kind of uh, engagement so uh what i'm trying to understand uh, uh, what i understand by question is that you already want to hide uh, the identity of uh, different project stakeholders while you are actually uh, sharing uh, the information across different departments uh actually not so basically for example if i get the huge data from let's say from my customer instead of you know sending to you guys the data i would like to let they probably have a session of one hour two hour based on you know you can consult me give the mm -hmm. guidance and advice you know and then i'll do it myself and get a cross verification okay absolutely uh we can actually set that up that's not a problem uh if uh, you could uh private message me your number i can actually transfer it over to the adequate uh, you know uh adequate people inside dice who actually can then help you out and actually reach out for consulting i think my data is already there it is an email id so okay. uh, if, if you can just send me your details i'll i'll try to catch up with you guys then absolutely absolutely thank you so very much uh, for calling if you have any other questions um um another question is around uh dice so is it a, a kind of a charity organization or you guys actually do the actual projects around that and how does this whole concept actually uh brought into reality because i never heard about dice earlier yeah dice is actually based in islamabad uh, but actually we have an outreach uh, in uh, and hadia please do correct me if i'm wrong um Uh, we have a reach uh, up to lahore and we have been doing a lot of sessions in uh, karachi uh, sorry in 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 peshawar as peshawar, well yeah. yeah peshawar as well we have done some international sessions as well no we are not a charity organization we are actually a for profit organization uh, but dice is uh, leveraging this new wave in uh, you know uh, that's that's occurring around data and and we actually are really enthusiastic about you know training people ke yaar data ko istemal kaise karna hai theek hai na hamara we have a huge problem you know over here uh, be it the public sector be it the private sector it, it data is not available and if it's available people don't use it to make decisions people unable so, to actually understand how to understand the data that is the main absolutely, part absolutely so the whole concept of dice was to actually bring all the data related skill sets into a, under a single single umbrella so this is what dice is in a crux hmm so and are you guys a training training guy a training yes, uh, mainly yes for can yes for can we do provide trainings uh, in data analytics domain uh, we have different subjects for it uh, for example data science big data business analytics um aapko agar mazid is cheez ko samajhna hai to you can attend all of our sessions all of our rounds seven rounds of data analytics to aapko zyada samajh mein aayegi ki kaun kaun se subjects ke around hum logon ki trainings hoti hain uh, jo mohsin ne baat ki ki hum data analytics ki domain ko uh, ज्यादा प्रमोट कर रहे हैं वो उसको प्रमोट करने के कुछ वेज हैं जिस तरह ट्रेनिंग्स देना रिक्रूटमेंट और कंसल्टेंसी सर्विसेज देना 
तो ये कुछ मोड्स है डाइस के इसके अलावा कोई क्वेश्चन है तो आप पूछ सकते हैं Things. I think let's let's catch up on a separate email then. I have also dropped uh, a, uh, a link in the chat box. Uh, Business analytics live training ki wo uh, training ka uh, uh, URL link hai. आप उसको भी go through कर सकते हैं और dice की website को भी go through कर सकते हैं तो आपको ज़्यादा अच्छे से and clear हो जाएगा. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for that. uh guys the floor is open if anybody has any other questions um please go ahead and ask um i would actually love to hear any questions if you have any ambiguities uh if you uh want to connect later uh for any guidance on any you know of your projects or anything i i would i would actually love to hear from you guys All right, so I think this is it. Um, I guess we have not no no more questions now. All right, great. So that's about it for the webinar. Thank you so much, Mohsin. We had a terrific time on this webinar with you. To all the attendees, I have mentioned an email in the chat section. You guys can email us for the recording or any queries regarding our training. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a great evening. Uh, thank you. Good office. Good evening. Yes.